All right, I'd like to give this another shot. I received a comment, a comment that was deleted. And to be honest, I actually really wish that person had not deleted it. It, uh, I, I thought it was a very good comment. The gentleman, I assume it's a gentleman based on the name, I won't say the name, but pointed out to me that I'd said something incorrectly about the dice ranges here. And the first thing I want to look at, and this is what the comment pertains to, and again, it wasn't a, it wasn't a negative comment. It was pointed out to me that I'd done something incorrectly, and I actually really appreciated it. So thank you to that person for that comment if you happen to be listening to this video. And don't be afraid to say something to me that could be construed as negative. You know, as long as you're pointing it out constructively in comments, I thought it was a useful comment. It's, you know, helping me in this moment. So I'd love it if I could, but you took it down so I can't. Anyway, so Stan Makita's dice range here of 2, 7, 2, and N meaning in a normal situation, so not shorthanded and not in the power play. Stan Makita in his normal position at center, taking a shot. The number two goes with the blue die. And if you roll a blue one, you don't even have to worry about any of these numbers over here on the right. But if it's a blue two, uh, here, this number on the left if, that corresponds to the blue die, if this is a two, then you do have to look at this middle number. And you have to look at the two white dice. If the two white dice add up to, let's say, a six or lower, then you don't have to look at this third number. And not every player will have a third number, but Stan Makita does. And this number here goes with the red die. And so only if the white dice add up to seven, like they equal seven, and the blue die equals two. Only if this two seven is in fact a two seven, meaning a roll of two on the blue die and then seven on the white dice, do you have to look at the third number, the red die number. And if this is a one or a two, then it means that Stan Makita's shot is in range. And another thing that I could and should have done in the last video is explain to non-hockey bones players, to anybody not familiar with bones or hockey games in general, when I say in range, I mean a shot that could potentially go in the net, get by the goaltender, fool the goaltender, a possible goal, in other words. So again, this is Stan Makita's normal shooting range. If the blue die is a one, stop looking. It's a shot in range and a possible goal. If the blue die roll is a two, check the white dice. And if the white dice add up to a number that is six or lower, you don't have to bother checking with this one. Again, it's in range and it's a possible goal. But if the white dice add up to seven, then look at this, look at the red die and see if uh, this here, number two, if the red die, again, if it's a three, four, five, or six, it means that Stan Makita, Stan Makita has narrowly missed um, taking a shot. That could be, I mean, the shot goes on, on goal, on net, but it's not a possible goal, right? If this red die is higher than two. Similarly, let's say the blue die roll is a three, four, five, or six. You can stop looking. Yes, Makita has a shot on goal, but no, it is not a shot in range. Call it a routine save for the opposition netminder. If the two is, if the, uh, if it's a blue two, because if it's a blue one, you also don't have to bother looking here. You really only have to look at these ones if this is a blue two. Um, and what was I going to say there? If it is a blue two and, uh, but then this, uh, the white dice add up to a number that's higher than seven, say eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12, then you can stop looking. Credit Stan Makita with a shot on goal, but also consider it a routine save for the goalie and the other team. And again, it's only if these two match up two and seven that that this is uh, that this comes into play here. Where again, a red one or a red two, still in range, still a green light, possibly a goal, which I guess would would be a red light if it actually in fact goes in and is a goal because it's still possible that the goalie could make a dynamic save. And if that sounds complicated. Okay, this is not the simplest of games, but precisely that's why I love it. I love the way that the that the shooting range and then also the potential for the goaltender to make an excellent save. I love the way that those work, and I wouldn't change a thing. 
The P here is just like the N, so everything that I said about dice ranges for N goes for P. The only difference in why there is a P here is because Stan Makita is in the power play. So as you can see there on the power play, he has a little, you know, more of a chance, a little greater chance. He had eight power play goals that season. This is Stan Makita's 1966 a 67 Hockey Bones card. And these are the classic cards here. These cards have since been redone. Some of the symbols, like the asterisks, have been removed. I will do a video once I get some of those newer look cards printed off. Uh, it's pretty similar for the most part, though. So I feel, and I feel that enough people probably still have this edition of these cards kicking around that uh, hopefully this video will be of some use anyway, and hopefully enough of it will transfer over to uh, the newer look cards in, in any event. But once I get those printed, I can always go back and do a video like this again. Because uh, again, I love this game. I love, you know, talking about it. And so, uh, again, this is if Stan Makita's in the power play where he has a slightly better range. Really quickly, if the blue die is a one, stop looking. If it's a 2, look and see if this is lower than an 8. And if it is, stop looking. And if this is an 8, and by this I mean the two white dice added up, uh, this adds up to 8 exactly, then check and verify with the red die if, uh, if this is still a shot in range. If it's a 1, 2, 3, or 4, it's a shot in range in this case. And if it's a 5 or 6, it is not a shot in range. It's a narrow miss. In a situation like that, even though it's not officially, I mean, technically, a, if it hits the post or crossbar, it's not technically a shot on goal. But for a narrow miss like that, that's how I like to think of it for narrative or imaginative purposes or whatever. This is if Stan Mikita's uh, playing defense. If he's playing the point in the power play, for instance, obviously he's not going to be, he's less likely to be in the slot. And so he's less likely to, uh, uh, you know, get off a shot that would be in scoring range in you know a possible goal and then this here is for for a shorthanded here this one to five and notice here there is no third number i did say there off the top that you don't always have a third a number here this number in brackets so you need not check a red die here basically if this is a blue one which actually makes sense because if this is not a blue one then you stop looking anyway like i also said so if this is a blue one and of course, the white dice are going to be 12 or below. So basically, if Stan Makita, now I get to it. If Stan Makita, if the blue one is rolled here, then he's taken a shot in range from the point. Because, um, of course, the white dice are going to be 12 or lower. But shorthanded, it isn't quite that easy or simple. Shorthanded, he still needs a blue one. No other blue roll will suffice here. But the white dice have have to add up to either five or lower they cannot go above five okay moving over here this here arrow and the symbol is a little different on the newer look cards uh, it's more like a cross uh, but this in either case this is a, a four checking uh, basically it means that stan makita is a good four checker i would consider him to be significantly better than average in order to have this uh, on his card and uh, what this is, and at this point as well, it's it's good to have a defense card to show what exactly this arrow corresponds to. So if I look at a defense card like Bob Bond, not of Boston in real life uh, in 67, 68, though in my game he is. So Bob Bond from one season later. And if you see this PF3 here, this rating of PF3, uh, this is probably going to be a pass, a successful pass. But what this means is you have basically passing against four checking. So passing against the forward's uh, ability to four check. Now Stan Makita has a four checking arrow. But because this is a PF3, the other two forwards also have to have four checking arrows in order for Bob Bond not to be able to complete the pass. If you look up here, this here PF1, uh, what this is. And these are arrived at uh, this here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This goes with the blue die. And then the two to 12 over here on this grid called the action code matrix. These are your white dice, right? This is a roll of your white dice. So here are the two, right? A two, four, a PF one. Here, if Bob Bond is playing and Stan Makita is up against him and on the ice at the same time, Bond cannot complete the pass because Makita has this here four checking rating. And again, this is this is only a PF1. So this has to exceed it. 
And also with the PF1, not only is it an unsuccessful pass, but it's an interception and a shot on goal for the player indicated by the red die. You look at the red die number, and then you look over here on Bond's card to see who actually the puck goes to on the other team and who would have that shot. So think of it as the defense is trying to clear the zone. They're trying to make that first pass, that clearing pass. The pass has been intercepted. Subsequently, there's going to be a shot on goal. Um, almost right away or technically right away within that 24 second sequence because the game hockey bones is played in 24 second sequences so the next thing on Stan Makita's card after the four checking which again can potentially intercept the pass a defenseman's pass and lead to a shot on goal not necessarily for the player Makita himself again that would be indicated by the red die looking at the defenseman's card over here, this column on the right. But after the four checking for, for Makita, we have Makita's face-off rating. This is the highest possible face-off rating in hockey bones, actually. Uh, there are, uh, there is, uh, if a card, if a player like Murray Oliver here does not have a, anything over here, it means he's just an average at best uh, player on the draw. He does not have a face-off rating. Some players like Jean Beliveau here, he has a single A face-off rating. But Stan Makita with the double A, that's the you know the best possible. And there is a face-off uh, table on the game chart, which uh, you know which corresponds to this. But uh, I said this too many times in the first take, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. I would encourage you to get the core game. It's very cheap. And and you can uh, you, it comes with the core game, I guess that that game chart. Okay, respectfully, I don't show the entire game chart on camera because, uh, and and I know this is true of well of other people who stream games and play games on camera. There are certain parts of the game that, it, out of respect to the designer or the owner of that game, it's kind of giving way the game to show it on camera. So I don't show the chart on camera in its entirety. It's usually off to the side, always at least partially covered. But you get it with the core game. Back to this. So this is, again, the action code matrix is what this is referred to uh, as in the instructions, in the game instructions, which can also come with the core game. And to the left of the action code matrix is the penalty. Now I have to be careful because I, I, I was thinking this time when I did this take, I would just do it straight like this, like, a roll of you know, one on the blue die and two on the white dice is this, and then two on two blue die and two on the white dice is this. I don't know if I'll do it that way now that I'm in the process of doing this. But so if you look here, this is where you look should Stan Makita get a penalty. And he is penalized if when you roll an X comes up or possibly also an X with a number. The difference is this one will be a penalty every time this one will only be a penalty if the red die is equal to or lower than this number. So a red die roll of 3, 2, or 1 would lead to a penalty for Stan Makita if first you have rolled 2 on the, uh, on the blue die and then in this case 12 on the white dice. So a 2 and then 2 white, two on blue and then 2 white 6s. Uh, let me actually adjust the focus there so it's more in the action code matrix. Sorry. Hopefully that's better. I saw a blur there. So if it's one, two, again, two on the blue die and then 12, six and six in the white dice. But then the red die has to either be a one, two or three for Mikita to have a penalty. If it's a four, five or six, it will be intercepted by the player indicated by a red four, five or six on Mikita's card. Not necessarily directly intercepted, but this is who on the other team will have the player, uh, I mean the puck, next. Because again, this game is played in 24 second sequences for a lot of the actions. Sometimes you do get multiple actions within the 24 seconds. This is going to be a penalty every time. And in either case, should a penalty come up with the follow-up roll, you're going to again roll the blue die and the two white dice, and you're going to look at these two columns over here to the left on Stan Makita's card, or on the player's card. It doesn't necessarily have to be Stan Makita. Uh, o means odd, so that would be a roll of a 1, 3, or 5 on the blue die. 
and, if, and therefore even is a roll of two, four, or six on the blue die. And these dashes here, these little hyphens, are just a straight two-minute minor penalty to Stan Makita. So he's going to get a two-minute minor most of the time. The only time he will get something other than that is with this code A. And the penalty codes, they're explained in detail. The, the letter codes, they're explained in detail in the game instructions. I still refer to them from time to time because I have not memorized them all. Uh, but also, for a quick reference on the game chart as, uh, itself as well, there is a quick condensed uh, skeletal look at what those penalty codes uh, represent. A, I believe, is a coincidental minor. So Makita, you know, other than the for the odd coincidental minor, seven, maybe not so odd, though it comes up with an odd roll here. It uh, It's going to be a straight two-minute penalty to Sam Makita most of the time. And also, too, when, when you do the follow-up uh, roll with the blue die and the two white dice, if the blue die roll is a one or two, so it can correspond to both odd or even to the odd one or the two even, uh, the result is a delayed penalty. penalty and uh, then, again, that's a little beyond the scope of this, and it's not something that I, that I use as often. But in that case, you would actually look to the red die to see who on the other team has the puck. And it's possible that that player could get a shot right away. But if not, if it's something else, then it's blown down pretty much immediately. Okay. So uh, other than, than that, I guess, getting back into the action code matrix. Um, although now that I'm looking at that again, which there's fork in the road here, because I could also tell you that on the far left side here, you have Stan Makita's minor rating. This comes up for retaliation. This I think I neglected to go over in the last uh, take of this, so I'll try to do this, uh, try to address it here. Uh, the retaliation, which again is part of the one page, only one page game chart, um, you're looking to see who, uh, basically there's a, like it, it's done in like a five, four, three, two, one. Five is somebody who would get penalties more often, and then, and then one, like Makita in this case. I did since check, he did in fact win the Lady Bing this and this season and in the next. So he led the league in penalty minutes one season. He became a two-time Lady Bing, Lady Bing winner. Just one of many amazing things about the career of Stan Makita. Family man he was. And uh, so, again, what I mean to say there, short story long is that his uh, minor rating of one here means that should a retaliation, a situation with retaliation come up, a little beyond the scope of this, he would be one of the least mo least likely, I wanted to say most least there, one of the least likely players to, uh, to receive that penalty in retaliation. At least in 67, that's not to speak of other seasons for Mikita, but this is not a Stan Mikita bio video. Uh, and he does not have a major rating, which means he did not get into any fights that uh, season. If you want to house rule this, uh, there are some house rules to allow for the impossible. I don't know of any for major penalties. I do know of one for players who scored zero goals in the season, for which it will actually show zeros across the board up here on their card. There is the house rule of one, two, one meaning a roll of, uh, and I forget, it's the, the odds of it are like 1 in 1,000 something. I don't think I've ever had it happen in well over 100, probably over 200 games of hockey bones by now. But um, it, that would be a roll of 1 on the blue die, 2 on the white dice, and then also 1 on the red die as well. So extraordinarily rare because those players almost never score. But I do like to allow the possibility for those players to score because as I did say in the last video, if in case anybody's listening to both, I'm aware that I'm repeating myself here a little. Uh, everyone is the Gretzky or Lemieux. Anyone that makes the NHL, that makes it that far in hockey, you were probably the Gretzky or Lemieux of your driveway, your household, your street, and your neighborhood. And it's only when you ascended to levels, the caliber of the NHL, that maybe you had to settle into a more defensive role unnecessarily, but you probably still score goals at every other level and are capable of scoring at the NHL level if you have the puck in scoring position. I don't care what you did in real life that, that season, whether or not you scored or not. Um, 
So, you know, if you're Toby Reader a few seasons back, you're fine. Or Scott Gomez, for that matter, when you were, when you were with uh, Montreal. Anyway, uh, this is game misconduct. And you can see as well, Makita, pretty much no game misconduct or misconduct in general. Right? Often players will have a rating here. Murray Oliver apparently was a bit misconduct savvy in the 66-67 season. They are not normally that high. So in a follow-up roll after the penalty rolled, you can do a follow-up roll here with the blue die and the white dice. And again, the two corresponds to the blue die and the 12 to the white dice. Basically, if Murray Oliver rolls a, a, a one or two on the blue die after being assessed a penalty, he will have misconduct to go along with it. So he'll get two and 10 quite often. Uh, I'm going to go back to the action code matrix and then I'll talk about uh, some of this stuff. So, uh, you know what? Actually, no, I changed my mind there on the spot. I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk about everything outside and around and then I'll get to the, to the meat and potatoes to this uh, 6 by 11 uh, uh, grid here. Um, so the assist rating, 34 for Stan Mikita. Similar to the retaliation, there, there is, uh, it goes, well, it goes hand in hand with that. There is a chart, uh, on the game chart, there is a table that will, uh, that you use, that you roll on to award assist after goals. And generally speaking, a 34, that's quite high for a player. Mikita did have 62 assists in 70 games that season. So, Likely more often than not, Makita will be awarded an, an assist on a goal. The pass rating of plus four would also suggest that Makita is going to get a number of helpers. I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to talk about this a little more once I get into the matrix. Because that's a, yeah, it's the, the matrix. When I say the matrix, it's short for action code matrix. The star means that Makita is, in the words of Peter Miller, and I think the words also in the, I just have his voice in my head sometimes when I'm doing these, interpret it however you will. Um, but this is in uh, the instructions, I believe, as well as Ace, in, in fact, I'm quite sure that it is, is Ace Penalty Killer. And so I can just imagine him, Peter, saying it. But anyway, um, this black star here, it means, again, Makita is an exceptional penalty killer. And depending on the season, and for an older season like 66, 67, he would just have a plus. This would give a plus one added to his team's penalty kill defense. How his team's penalty kill defense is, uh, it, again, a little beyond the scope of this, but on the one-page game chart, there is uh, a table that shows a uh, team defense for like five on four, four on four, four on three situations and so on. And this would be added to that when his team is shorthanded and it would be a plus one for his season. I think it's after 2014. It's a plus two. I don't have it right in front of me. I'm just going on memory. I don't play those newer seasons of hockey, at least not yet. Three is Stan Makita's defense, uh, defense rating. And it's probably beyond the scope of this to tell you that this is adjusted. And I'll be honest, it's something that when I first saw that this gets adjusted often, when I was learning to play hockey bones, trying to learn how to play hockey bones, I thought, well, that's an unnecessary complication. Having played it a lot, I completely get it. I'm all for it being in the game. I completely, I think I completely understand why it's there and please keep it there. And I might get into it a little bit when I'm talking about things that are in the action code matrix. But again, now just in general, three is his defensive rating. I guess to look at a defenseman, because Bob Bond, he has a second defensive rating. This here is what is referred to in the game as a clearing rating. And this comes up in rebound situations when there's a shot with a possible rebound. Now, of course, Bond would probably not likely try to clear his own rebound. But uh, should another player of the forward or defense in the other team get a shot with a possible rebound, I'm then going to roll on this. And there is also a clearing table, again, on that one-page game chart that will tell you about the clearing rating, where you're adding up the clearing ratings of the two defenders and then checking it against the, the table. And you're checking the 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 role of the, uh, the the blue and white dice against the table. The blue, white, and occasionally the red, actually, as well. 
are occasionally the red, often the red, sometimes the red, not always. So back to this. And again, if anything that I've explained here is unclear, if you're, you're still not clear, email me a question. It might be a little easier for me to answer the question in writing than it is where, you know, I do my best at this. Uh, I'm, I'm not a public speaker. So, you know, it is what it is. I think probably I will always have some level, some degree of social anxiety that will come through and forth when I'm talking on camera. And you might think that it's strange that I make videos like these having admitted that. But if I didn't also enjoy it, if I didn't concurrently enjoy it, then I wouldn't do these in the first place. So, you know, if you can think of things in life that you might do that are also outside of the scope of this video that uh, you might enjoy, but you might also be a little, you know, nervous doing it. To, anyway, I'm just saying there are things in life that one can both get a little nervous to do, but also enjoy. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I should leave it at that. So to the action code matrix, the player's action code matrix. If uh, in the case of Stan Makita in 1967, a blue die roll of one and the white dice adding up to two uh, triggers or signifies or elicits uh, this H6 here, lands on this H6. What this means is if Stan Makita is on the road, if he's if Chicago is the away team, you look no further. You look at the number rolled on the red die, and then you're going to look here on the right column, on the right side of Stan Makita's card, and it will go to the player on the other team indicated by this column. For power player penalty kill, it's only if a red six is rolled on the power player penalty kill that it would go to this player indicated for the power play or penalty kill. So that's an H6. An H6 at home, and again, this is only if Stan Makita's at home, means that you take this six and you compare it to the defensive ratings of three players in an even strength situation. Again, for power play penalty kill, it's a little different. But for an even strength situation, you're going to look, and of course, this is the one that would occur a lot more often than not. You will look at the opposition center, the player directly opposed. So the examples I used earlier were Derek Sanderson, his defense rating of two. And then I need a left and right defense uh, uh, defensive pair here. So left and right defenseman will take Elmer Moose Vosco with his defense rating of three. Again, this is the defense rating. This is the clear clearing rating. So the defense rating here on the left side. And Bob Bond with his defense rating of four. So adding those three numbers up, three plus four plus two, they are nine. But actually we have to subtract two from nine. So this comes down to seven. And Stan Makita's uh, six is lower than seven. So it means that he's unable to get a shot off. Whether, that, whether that's because he was knocked off the puck or had it taken away from him or had a pass intercepted or shot but the shot missed the net or maybe he dumped it in the corner, you know, close to a line change, maybe that's what happened. Uh, you can interpret that however you will, but what it will ultimately mean for, you know, the purposes, the mechanics of this game is that the puck will go to the player on the other team, again, indicated by the red die, the number rolled on the red die. And you can see there the numbers next to the to the uh, positions. Okay, so that, that's with a, a blue die roll of one and the white dice two. With a blue die roll of two and the white dice again adding up to two and this here's straight six, in this case, it does not matter if Stan Makita is at home or on the road. So what this does is this sort of leverages home ice advantage uh, in certain situations to certain players but here it's going to be equal, whether Stan Makita is uh, away or home. You're going to take this number six and you're going to compare it to the center, left defense and right defense of the other team. And after a while too, I call it triangulating. I kind of make little triangles, I think, you know, with my eyes when I'm rolling and looking. And should the, the defensive ratings, and again, it would be the center plus left defenseman plus right defenseman all added up, subtract two. If that number is greater than six, 
Makita has lost the puck or is unable to get a shot off and the other team now has it. Player indicated by the red die. Or if it's six or below, because I don't think I've said it yet in this video, but another key to this game is often but not always equal to, um, how do I say this? If this number six here is equal to or greater than, so it doesn't always have to be greater than, it can just be equal to, Stan Mikita has a shot on goal in this case. Here too, if it's greater than or equal to, if the six is greater than or equal to, uh, the opposition defense, that being again the center plus left defense plus right defense, defense rating, all added up, but then subtract two. And if you think that's complicated, it's no, it's no more complicated than the ODAI. So stop it. <laughs> I might be referring to one person in particular there if he's still listening. Anyway, or if he's listening. Um, because in case I don't say it again, and I think I said it too many times in the first take, with all due respect, it's easy to sit on the sidelines and say that this is a hard game to play. It's, it's easier to sit on the sidelines and say that Hockey Bones is a complicated game and it's hard to play uh, than if you set it up and, and try rolling through it. And I'll try to get back to that point as well. I'm not trying to be too snotty or snarky, and sometimes I am unintentionally, and I, I mean no harm. Um, however, I think that there really is something to be said for looking at it versus setting it up, rolling the dice, looking at what comes up again, blue here, white here and uh and, and then going from there and just playing a few slow shifts and slow periods and and just getting to know it that way and also i i would add to that not worrying about playing it perfectly because i don't play it perfectly all the time and i don't think that that really hinders or tarnishes you know takes away from the experience in any way so at this rate this is going to be a six hour long video grab a snickers Uh, that's my Snickers in a mug there. Okay, so H8 again. Well, okay, I, mean, I guess now that I've said that, I think I caught a bit of a break. H8 is like H6, except two better. So here, the opposition defense, in the case of Makita being a center again, the, the center in the other team, the left defense in the other team, and the right defense in the other team all added up, but then subtract two. And that number, if it is uh, higher than eight, he doesn't get the shot off. He's lost the puck. If it's eight or below, then Stan Mikita does have a shot on goal here. Nine is like H8, but one better. And seven is like H8 and H9, but not quite as good. And again, these are arrived at here. It's a blue die four, white dice adding up to two. Blue die five, white dice adding up to two. Here, a six on the blue die. And the white dice again, the snake eyes adding up to two. You have a D7. This is a little different than this where again, you're looking versus the center plus left defense plus right defense, minus two. And the center plus left defense plus right defense minus two, only if the player is at home. Here, it's the opposition defenders only, the defense only, solely the blue liners. Again, Vosco, this is Vosco's card. You can't really see it there, but it is. Uh, and that's a sticker that I added to it separately. That didn't come as part of the card. You can kind of see the outline there of the I printed that on sticker paper. So Vosco is a three and Bon here is a four. So looking at Makita again, this is D7. Pop quiz, does Stan Makita have a, have a shot on goal here? What do you think? If you answered yes, uh, you are correct. I was I was going to try to make some joke about, you know, you're biased in Chicago and you're a Stan Makita fan, but I'm a Stan Makita fan and not a Blackhawks fan. Uh, the reason being equal to or greater than. So this seven here, again, uh, Vosco was a three, Baum was a four. The, their defensive ratings add up to seven. But if Stan Makita, if this number here is equal to or greater than, it favors the offense and it's a shot. If Bon and Vosco had added up to an eight or nine or, you know, beyond, then Mikita has somehow the puck has been misplaced and looked at the red die to see who in the other team has it. Now here, I've already explained the six. It's the same as earlier, but here now you're looking at a blue die roll of one and the white dice adding up to three. 
Here too, blue die roll of two, white dice adding up to three. Here, if a blue die roll of three on Stan Makita's 1967 card and the white dice three, they add up to three. This is automatically a shot on goal if home, if Stan Makita's, you know, playing for the home team. And if Makita is the away team, the visitor, this is an automatic turnover. Again, what do you do with the turnover? Pop quiz. You look at the red die and the puck will go to the player indicated on the red die. Um, where was I? Okay, P5. Uh, so this is passing against intimidation. Passing against the opposition intimidation. Stan Makita doesn't have any intimidation bars on his card. Derek Sanderson, on the other hand, does. So Sanderson has one bar. Ted Hampson doesn't have any. Bill Hickey doesn't have any. But let's say that Boston is on the ice with the, the, def the defense pair that I like to call the Bash Brothers. My little project replay so far. Not so little, actually. Uh, this here, what looks to me like a pause button on a remote control for, you know, what have you, DVD player or cable, whatever. Um, cable, DVD, Netflix. Okay, work with me. Uh, so anyway, two intimidation bars is what I should say and just quit trying to be silly. Two bars plus two bars plus one bar. In this case, equal to or greater than won't suffice. Those bars add up to five. So they have knocked Makita off the puck in some way or other. And again, who does the puck go to? To the player on the other team indicated by the red die, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, even strength. And it's going to be one of these positions. Um, however, let's say that, in, again, we'll pretend that Makita somehow has traveled through time and is playing Boston in the following season. Vosco does not have an intimidation bar, and Bond just has the one. So let's say they are the defense pair out there with Derek Sanderson and what I call the shh line, again, in my replay, my revision, my revisiting and reimagining the history of the NHL where they just kept six teams only after 1968 and the expansion was a flop and blah, blah, blah. That's, again, not what this video is for. I have other videos for that. Uh, so here, Sanderson with the one opponent intimidation point or bar, and then Baum with the one, but no other players have a bar, so it's only two. So now Stan Makita's P5, which again is arrived at with a blue die roll of four and the white dice adding up to three. Stan Makita has completed the pass easily. Who has he completed the pass to? Now you use the red die, not to see who in the other team has the puck, but rather to see which of Stan Makita's teammates has the puck. And, and Stan Makita being the center, should it come up in this case with a red die roll of two or six, you could interpret that as Makita has handed the puck off to a teammate and that teammate maybe has passed it to another teammate or something, passed the puck back to him or passed it directly back to him. In any case, Stan Makita has the puck again. Again, this game is played in 24 second sequences. So 24 seconds of time, the puck could have changed hands a few times. Makita now has it again. But in the the initial instant there that he had it, when this 4-3 was rolled, and that's how I would read it. And I have videos where I'm playing the game. If I announce a 4-3, that's what I'm talking about. If you look, hopefully anyway, the blue die is a 4, and the white dice add up to 3. Sometimes, again, when you roll enough of them, I'm not going to claim that I always get that 100% correct. You get a bit tired, you get, you know dicey or whatever upstairs and you end up um seeing sixes where there are sevens and vice versa anyway moving on to possible oncoming dyslexia i've never been diagnosed but you know it's uh anyway the p5 here makita's completed the pass easily if uh the opponent intimidation bars are four or lower if they are five or above and i showed an instant where that could be the case then he can't complete the pass seven here with a blue die roll of five and the white dice adding up to three is much like these uh, sixes over here. Uh, only now the, uh, the, the opponent defense, the opponent, what's referred to as team defense uh, on the game chart and also in the instructions, the center, left defense and right defense, in this case would have to add up to eight or greater instead of seven or greater for Makita to be unable to get a shot on goal. H9 was discussed up here. This time it's arrived at with a two on the, uh, or sorry, with a six on the blue die and then adding up to three on the white dice. 
Hopefully I've talked about how this role works. I mean, I might revisit it again from time to time, but I see this one's already 40 minutes long. So I, I want to maybe try to go through the rest of the matrix here a little more quickly. When you have an I symbol, it is, you might think of it as an icing or some other infraction where play has been stopped. So some play stoppage, whistle, what have you. And this question mark means that Sam Makita might be injured. Not every eye has a question mark next to it, but adjacent to this one, a lot of them actually that I've seen will have it. So this is not only a play stoppage, but we are also going to check to see if Sam Makita is hurt. And how to determine if he is hurt? Well, honestly, and this is cheating the game a bit. This is very Ken Castro. And if you don't know the, if you, you don't uh, know what I'm talking, what or who I'm talking about, it's a previous project earlier in 2021. The intimidation bars here add up to five, because again, two plus two, and then if Sanderson is on the ice, one, and some of Ken's sets of five, they had six, seven, or eight intimidation points or greater, or it looked like that. That's how I remember it, even if I'm exaggerating slightly. Uh, Stan Makita is automatically injured here, because when you roll to see whether or not he's injured, you have to subtract one from the blue die. So the blue die, the highest the roll can be is six. So you're subtracting that to five. Makita has been injured by the sh line in the Bash Brothers. However, again, if the opponent intimidation points do not add up to the number indicated on the blue die, minus one, yes, it takes some getting used to, get used to it, it's worth it, then Stan Makita has not been injured, right? Let's say, for instance, it's, again, Sanderson will give him his one, and then we'll say it's Boston set. This is basically when I don't want Boston to take another penalty or when I think they don't want it. This is the pairing that I lean on a little more heavily. Uh, just one plus one there. Bond plus Sanderson, that's only two. So in this case, if Makita on the follow-up roll, if it's a blue four, blue five, or blue six, he would not be injured. But if it's a blue one, two, or three, he is because even with the three, you subtract one from the blue die. So that's two. How badly is Stan Makita hurt? There is an injury chart. There's this, there's an injury chart that you get with the core game. And then it's also on page four, 15, maybe 16 in the, in the instructions. I guess maybe depending on the edition and how you have them printed. That will tell you how severe Makita's injury is. And you look to the 2D6 roll. Uh, to, to find that out. The the opponent intimidation points, the OIP, the way that, that it reads, it's beyond the scope of this video. I'm not going to show it. I'll explain it quickly, hopefully. Uh, it goes from zero to five or greater. And because it's possible for a player to get hurt in rare instances, even if there's no one on ice that can intimidate. It's hockey. It's a high speed game. Sometimes stuff, however fluky, happens and players get hurt. Uh, so... The uh, the rows would correspond to the opponent intimidation points on that table. And then, and I'm going to stop pointing at this. <laughs> that might be distracting. And then the columns, you'd look to the 2D6 rolled and see how severe the injury is. There could be a P there, meaning for the period, a G there, meaning for the game, or a minus one or two there, which would just take away uh, from some of these what are known as the N scores, the number scores in normal situations. And... Uh, and, and also the passing could be a little compromised as well, the player's passing. But uh, hopefully I'll get to that another time. Eight, much like the sixes and sevens. Comparing against the team defense, I've talked about this earlier in the video, but now that team defense has to be a little stronger to stop Makita. When I see a 12, unless the team defense is super good, I'm basically just going to roll you know, a sh for Makita to see if he's put a shot on goal in range or not. Uh, not very often will you have an opposition defense that will add up that high, especially if you get over here 14 and 13. Pro a, ca a casual glance at best at the opposition, but you're probably good to go. Uh, here again, we I explained this one over here, only here would be arrived at with a blue die roll of four and the white dice adding up to four. The 10, again, these are end scores. So let's get the one that we haven't yet already, because I talked about this as well, pop quiz, Automatic shot if home and automatic what is referred to in the rules as an interception if not. It's automatically going over to the other team if not. The D6, much like the D7, 
Only this time the opposition defense, and this is again blue liners only, defensemen only in this case, only have to add up to above six. If they are six or below, Stan Mikita will have a shot on goal. But if they are above six, then Stan Mikita is laughing about as hard as my wife in the other room watching some Korean drama or other and with that cough evidently eating spicy, something spicy along with it. Um, we each have our fun together and separately. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and the answer to tell her to tone it down is I already kind of politely asked her to once. I'm not asking her again. No, it's not. That's not cool, especially not on a Saturday. Anyway, uh, I think she's trying. I hope. <laughs> so here's the nine for Mikita. The 11, so again, this possible shot on goal, though less likely. This here 11 is more likely to be a shot on goal. This D9, not many defense will add up to nine. Uh, to, you know, Bob Bond, his defense rating is four. Fosco is three. You will see some fives, some blue liners with a defense rating of five individually, but it's pretty rare. So unless you have like a five plus a five, Mikita's probably penetrated the blue liners and he has a shot here. Uh, P5, I explained again, this is forward passing against intimidation. For defense, it's a little different. For defense, the code is, is uh, though they also have passing against intimidation, for the defenseman, you also have to look out for the PF, the passing against forechecking. And the short answer is yes to, is this explained on the easy access one-page game chart? The answer is yes. It's, it's there as well. It's very quick to look at and easy to see. And it also reminds you, treat it as an interception if the condition is not met. And of course, my golden rule with hockey bones is if all else fails, treat it as an interception and roll on. That's a rule that even since I started making videos for bones a year ago, I, I think of a lot less often now, practically never. Uh, so we talked about the P5 passing against opponent intimidation. This is an automatic shot. Stan Mikita has a shot. You need not look at the opposition defense or the center on the other team or anything like that. You can just go ahead and roll for the shot on goal, but with whatever situation Mikita is in, the even strength, it's here, or normal here. On the power play, it's here. If he's playing defense for some reason or he's on the point on the power play, it's here. If he's shorthanded, it's here. Automatically a shot. Similarly, this is automatically a pass. So you don't have to check your opponent intimidation. You don't have to check opponents for checking or anything like that. A P is as good for a pass as this asterisk here is for a shot. It's done automatically. Look no further. But in the case of this, you are looking at that red die to see which of Mikita's teammates has the puck. And it is possible that he quickly handed it off to a teammate on a give and go or something like that. And Mikita now has the puck again. Moving down to uh, row seven, at which point I'm just going to revisit and say that, again, a blue die roll of one, two, three, four, five, or six. Here, the white dice adding up to seven. We see our first R on Stan Mikita's card. And R is a shot on goal with a possible rebound. So roll for the initial shot. Check to see if it's in range, if it's a possible goal. If it is a possible goal, you have to look in the goalie card. I want to do a separate video on the anatomy of a goalie card, but actually for a quick look here. So if it's in range, you're going to look to Favelle. And again, this is an older style card, an asterisk, and it's a goal. And notice that adjacent to the asterisk, also the letters, uh, the position letters are in lowercase. Again, I can get into it another time. Why are all those positions in a goalie card? I will get into it. I probably probably be remiss not to go any to go any further and not say that what I love a lot about this game yes with its complexity you get unrivaled in my estimation based on my experience in every game that I've played player individualization and to, if you want players to be even slightly different like Stan Mikita to be even slightly different than Jean Beliveau both very good players in 1967, even as a Habs fan and a pickup game out back, all, all, all things, everything else being equal, give me Stan Mikita uh, on my team for 67 and I'll leave it at that. But um, where was I going with that now? Uh, unrivaled individualization of players and, and goalies for that matter too, one might even argue. 
So this is a goal. And if there's a G adjacent to the position, this could also be a goal. And also uh, next to an F as well. It's uh, There's an FG in Doug Favell's uh, pretty awesome 1968 goalie card. That's going to be a goal. But again, I can get into that more in another video. I only got into it here to say that if Makita's taking a shot, that's a possible goal that's in, you know, that falls into his ranges. Not going to get into those again. Back to the beginning of the video. Um, that's, that's where I, I do explain those. Uh, if it's a possible goal, look here. If it's not a possible goal, don't look here. Just look at the red die and see who the rebound goes to. This would indicate a player on another team. And if it's a red six, you re-roll and then you look here on the second roll. And this is another thing that in addition, addition to the center adjustment uh, for the team defense, adjusting the center's team defense, I, I used to, fully honest, used to be a bit bothered by it. Like, why, why is that there? Didn't get it. This one here in the follow-up, it's because, the, as you can see here, here the rebound could go to a defenseman. But when you think about it, in a real game situation, it's probably going to go to a forward more often than not, right? To the opposition that's closer to the net. So this red six allows for that, allows the forward to get the rebound more often. So, you know, once the shot, it, let's assume that it's a shot that's, uh, that's um, uh, not in range, or it doesn't really matter, even if it is, if it's not, it's not a goal, and the rebound, it would go back to the opposition player. And then you have to look at the clearing ratings on uh, the defense. In this case, be, whoops, I took away Doug Favell. Yes, Doug Favell plays for Boston in my reimagination of the NHL. And he's doing really well. He said they're undefeated. Uh, so um, the clearing rating, why did I get Favell again? Favell's defense. Uh, in this case, Vosco and Bond, let's see. Four plus four. Wait, this is Van Impenteg Green. So four plus four, that's eight. Again, on that easy access, easy to use, one page game chart, there is the clearing table. And if uh, the follow-up roll, the follow-up uh, 46 roll, if it's within that clearing range, then uh, there will be no rebound shot. But if it's if it's above that range, if it's higher than that range, then you go ahead and take uh, a shot with the player who should already have the puck. You should already have determined via the red die roll on the goalie's card what player on the opposition has the puck. Again, that's a little... It, it, that's not the sole, the primary reason, I should say. That's not the primary, not the main reason why I wanted to do this video. But there you have it. Okay, so after the shot on goal with a possible rebound, you have this here at symbol. And how I interpret this is Stan Mikita has handed the puck off to a teammate and he's trying to maneuver himself in scoring position, be it in the slot, somewhere in the goal mouth, wherever, to... Uh, well, to try to score a goal. So in this case, you have to check not Stan Makita, which is inconvenient because as, as the initial puck holder, his pass rating is uh, disqualified from this. You have to add up the pass ratings of his teammates. So let's say in a weird world that he's teammates of Ted Hampson in 68 and he plays for Boston or Hampson for Chicago. Hampson's plus two. And Bill Hickey plus one. Anyway, the, the, these two players, right? Makita's line. Let's just say these are his line mates and quit being silly. They add up to three. And then you look to see if the defensemen, not, not as many defensemen have passed bonuses, though some do. Basically, you have to see if that number uh, adds up to the number rolled on the red die. And it has to be equal to or greater than the number rolled on the red die. So... If it's uh, if the red die rolled, uh, let's say for example, it's a f it's a three. Stan Makita will have a shot on goal because he here you see one line mate pass bonus of two, here one line mate pass bonus of three, so it adds up to three. It means that Makita will have a shot on goal with the follow up roll. If the red die 
number is higher. Let's say again, in, the, in this case, let's say again, he's got one wing that has a plus two for passing, another with a plus one, but let's say the defense don't have any passing bonuses. Makita, again, being the, the initial puck holder, the puck holder is referred to in the rules. You can't count his passing rating here. Um, he doesn't have a shot on goal. Again, if that's a red die of four, five, or six, and his teammates' passing bonuses add up to three only, then a red die roll of four, five, or six, and Makita does not have a shot on goal. Uh, again, the asterisk, I'll kind of use hopefully the bottom half is more review. Hopefully this is more explanation and this is review. Automatic shot, automatic shot. Again, blue die roll, one, two, three, four, five, or six. White dice adding up to eight. Uh, automatic pass, automatic shot. Uh, here, do the defense, uh, do the ratings uh, add up to a number that's greater than seven? Because if they add up to seven or less, Mikita has a shot on goal. Here, another shot automatically. Here, 14, honestly, pretty much as good as automatic. I'm going to say well over 90% of the time. Here, it's automatic, but only if he is at home. Again, in the individualization and customization of these cards, which to, the, which to my understanding um, are auto-generated, they're, they're automated or they're, they're generated by a machine, a computer with an algorithm. So uh, that's why, again, if a player didn't score any goals that season, my understanding is that's why they wouldn't have anything up here and why, let's say, if they didn't take a single fight major all season, they might not have a major rating either, right? That's how that works. And you can house rule your way around that if you want anything to be possible, which, again, I would argue that in hockey, pretty much anything should be possible. Uh, eight, again, like some of these sixes and sevens that I talked about up here, uh, and, and I mean the 13s and 14s as well, only here. This is where I would look at the opposition a little more closely. To be honest with you, I've played this game enough times, and if I see a 14, I'm going to go ahead and shoot. I'm only going to slow down if I'm aware that the, his opposition defense on, on that particular shift of that team is really good. That particular line of that team is really good. Uh, penalty I alluded to when I was explaining this column, and I don't think I jumped over anything there in in row nine. Uh, so here into row ten, again the X Stan Makita will definitely have a penalty here. He could negate it somewhat with a coincidental. He could bring a guy with him, but uh, he definitely has a penalty here. Whereas down here, he only has a penalty if the red die rolled is three or lower. If it's a four, five, or six. It's an interception. It's a condition that's not met. This says, says this much in the game chart. It's treated as an interception. And you come over here and see who on the other team has the puck. Uh, H8 again. So these here, what this indicates to me is that Stan Makita, I don't think it's too far-fetched to say, you know, though I've not confirmed it, I've not looked at enough player cards, maybe quite as closely to really confirm this, but it would appear to me that Stan Makita probably performed a fair bit better at home in Chicago in 1967 than he did on the road. If you were to look at his home versus his road numbers, it wouldn't surprise me uh, very much based on his card that's been generated here. So um, did I say earlier in this video that I was going to try to make this one a little shorter? Um this is uh, now nearing an hour. So, but I did get to this stuff beforehand. So, uh, I'm, I guess at this point, I really, really hope I've not overlooked anything. And if you have a question and you'd rather not ask it in comments, if you think it's a, for whatever reason, if you think it's a stupid question, which I don't really think that there are any, or if you're uncomfortable asking it for any reason, uh, hockeyunreal at gmail.com. That's why my channel name is Hockey Unreal. Uh, it was originally Unreal Hockey, but the, the the Gmail address Unreal Hockey was already taken by another channel that has that name Unreal Hockey. So what was suggested to me as an alternative was Hockey Unreal. I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. It's kind of backwards, but hey, it puts hockey first, right? So uh, so then within a day or two or a video or three, the uh, the channel name, I decided to switch it over to go along with the email which again is just simply hockeyunreal at gmail.com, no underscores or other symbols, uh, you know, in between anywhere. It's just hockeyunreal at gmail.com. Ask me a question about the game, about the player cards, about any of these codes or symbols that you uh, 
feel like you haven't explained off the top rebound again rebound it might just be a little easier for me to get on the keyboard and just point out a situation a scenario with a rebound one where the rebound shot would be taken and another where where it might be lost um and you know i'll be glad to uh, answer that for you to the best of my ability as always, as I've done before, and it bears repeating, you, if you go to the forum in Delphi, there are some excellent people over there who can uh, answer that question for you. You know, everyone's really nice over there. Doc Savage, Sauvage, <laughs> Dave is over there. There's a, and every hockey uh, replay forum, there has to be, I think it's a rule actually, there has to be a one Dave, probably even a two Dave minimum on, on every uh, hockey uh, replay forum on Delphi. Uh, so you, you'll find at least a Dave or two over there who can help you out. I'll do uh, my best to help you out as well if I happen to notice your question over there in the PT Games uh, forum. And uh, yeah, that is a look at a breakdown and anatomy of, uh, uh, of a single player's card. I think what I will do in another video, because this one is over an hour now, I'll do one for the defense where again the block rating comes up. It's a little more prevalent. Did I talk about a block? Oh, so when uh, when a shot is in range, you also have to look carefully to see if you also have to check, I should just say, to see if the shot might be blocked. If a three comes up on uh, if the white dice add up to a three on a shot that otherwise would be in range. So let's say this is a blue one, white three or even a blue two, white three. Look to the opposition to see if uh, possibly if the shot has been blocked. Uh, in that case, also as well, you're looking to see if the red, uh, if the red die is uh, a one or a two. It's screened, and it's that's going to lower this by one, meaning it's even more likely a shot on goal in range, or it is uh, blocked, and then the puck would go to the opposition again, indicated 